Chuck. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about the three twilights. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I got to correct you on this one. There are four twilights. You got twilight. Then you got new moon. Then you got eclipse. And then you got breaking dawn. And in every single one of them, Edward is so dreamy. <laughs> My God. I'm afraid the that answer... man can bite me any day. Okay. I'm afraid the answer is incorrect. Okay. What? Astronomically speaking. Oh. This is a science show. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course, you have to ruin it with science. But go ahead. What are the three? So, in any given place on Earth, we rotate in such a way so that the sun dips below your horizon. Unlike some movies and some court cases and some people who think that the instant the sun sets, it's dark, nothing could be more false than that. They made this mistake in Back to the Future when Marty goes back to 1955 and he's driving out from the barn because he visited the farmer's barn in his DeLorean. And it is dark at the beginning of the driveway. And at the end of the driveway, you see sunrise and it's light. No. Mm -hmm. That's not how that works. All right. Okay. In John Wick 4, yes. there's this scene that happens early morning hours. Yeah. And he ascends this staircase up to this plateau. And it's dark. And then the sun rises and then it's light. No, these people just have never looked up. They think the sun alone, direct sunlight, is their only source of light. You know what else is lighting things up? The atmosphere. Okay. okay? So the sun dips below the horizon. Light is still illuminating the atmosphere above your head. Right. It yeah. is still glowing from sunlight. That's called twilight. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's gorgeous. By the way, if we had no atmosphere mm. and the sun went below the horizon, dark. Dark. Oh, you know they have that on the moon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's why... All of our astronauts landed in the daytime. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my point. I think I'm done with the Earth here. Nice job. So you can ask, the deeper below your horizon the sun goes, the higher and higher up the sunlight is hitting. So the lower atmosphere is more and more in darkness, okay? If it's really far around the other side, there's no light illuminating any part of the air above you. We call that nighttime, right? Nighttime. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Just want to let you know I'm with you. <laughs> there are three kinds of twilight. There is civil twilight. All right. Hello, I'm twilight. <laughs> so terribly nice to meet you. If only civil wars could be that polite. Oh, wouldn't that be something? You know, I would kill you, but um, that would be rather unpleasant, wouldn't it? <laughs> A civil twilight is until the sun is six degrees below the horizon. There's still some light in the upper atmosphere, but for practical purposes, for ordinary people, nighttime begins when it's six degrees below. People don't have much need for the sky, like other people do. For all you troglodytes who aren't looking <laughs> up. <laughs> There's another twilight called nautical twilight. Oh, okay. It's gotta be darker than civil twilight for them to use their sextant and their Navigate by the stars. That makes sense. It makes sense. So the sun's got to be 12 degrees below the horizon. Look at that. Yeah. And at that point, you start seeing many more stars for you to navigate by. Okay. Where six degrees, not so much. Right, because there's still light there's still in the atmosphere. There's still a lot of light in the atmosphere above right. you. The sky is still glowing blue. The blue sky is light from the sun. Right. Scattered back to you. Right. On the moon, there is no scattered light. So the sky... Daytime sky is as dark as Black. night. Black. Black. Mm. Okay? All right. How I like my men. Black is the sky and the moon. That's right. But the astronomer, mm. we go deeper than what the eye can see. We bring out telescopes. I don't want twilight messing with my telescopic views of the night sky. So we go an extra six degrees lower than nautical twilight. Wow. 18, 18 degrees, degrees below the horizon. Okay. Only then is the end of astronomical twilight. Wow. Yeah. What time would that be about? Well, right? no, so it depends. If you're near the equator, mm -hmm. the angle that the sun sets to the horizon is almost vertical. Right. 
So if you're going vertically down, you're booking into the darkness, okay? But the farther away from the equator you go towards the poles, the sun's angle to the horizon gets shallower and shallower. So here comes the sunset. And how long does it take to get deep below it? Well, it's ambling its way along a hypotenuse, okay? Mm, okay. Along a slopey angle. So twilight can last hours and hours. Right. Do you know all of England sits north of the northernmost part of Maine? Why would I ever have know that? So England <laughs> has very long twilight. Very long twilight. Is that why, uh, what is it, six months out of the year, the nights are only... Oh, so if you keep going even farther, farther north, yeah. okay, there is no night. It's all twilight. It says twilight. <laughs> the sun never gets below your designated level. If it's astronomical twilight, it stays above 18 degrees right. or above 12 for nautical, above 6. So then my wife is from Alaska. They, they just the Fairbanks. Don't. There's the midnight softball game on the solstice, the summer solstice. Right. Yeah, it's just twilight the whole time. I once got a, a private tour. Well, it's a group tour uh -huh. at the Museum of Modern Art. Very nice. Uh, there was a curator there mm -hmm. who was in charge of a set of paintings that they gathered that were all sort of twilight. And I know where you are most likely to find twilight on Earth, which is where? In a movie theater. <laughs> I'm looking at these paintings, and then I say to the curator, were all these paintings done at high latitudes? Like in Nordic countries, in Scotland, mm -hmm. England, you know? And she said, as a matter of fact, yes. And I said, could it be that at these higher latitudes, twilight lasts hours, which is long enough for an artist to see it, be impressed by it, go get home, get the easel, and paint it. Wow. And she freaked out. I mean, in a good way. Okay. She was like... <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it was a good way. So this twilight thing affects art and creativity. I mean, I love it. Uh, that's very cool. So these are your twilights. I don't know how many people know about them. So recite them to me. What are they? So you got your oh. civil, of course, <laughs> uh, and then your nautical, and then your astronomical. So there you have it, three twilights. Nice. And when we go observing on mountaintops, we are given the time of astronomical twilight. Right. So we can plan our observing schedule around that. Very cool. And Chuck, of course, it's symmetric for the evening and the morning. We would start astronomically 18 degrees below the horizon, and when it hit 18 degrees on the other Coming side, the other side back up, then you end that's your still night. twilight. Yeah, end of your night and the beginning of the twilight. Right. And that old saying, it's darkest before dawn. Right. That's just bullshit. Yep. That, Sorry. No. Wrong. Wrong. No. Nope. No. This was a good one because I never even knew that never was Never even thing. knew that anybody thought about it. But another Star Talk explainer. The Three Twilights. Chuck, always good to have you, man. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always, bidding you to keep looking up.